Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and today we're looking at properties of AX plus B. So that's statistical examples um, in this form. So here are some facts that you might like to write down and we're going to go and unpack some of these shortly. Um, but the ones that are going to be of most use for today's video um, are these. So that if you have um, an example in this form, I guess it kind of looks like a linear equation, sort of the old MX plus C form. To be able to work out the expected value of that whole function, you can actually use this property, which we're not going to prove, feel free to look it up if you want to, where notice that the A comes out the front and it's multiplied by the expected value of X plus B, sitting on its own there. Okay, so I'm going to leave those facts up in the corner here. I'm going to do um, one example with a couple of parts. So classic example here, we're rolling a die and there's the following probabilities of a one in six chance of each scenario happening where X is the number of dots on the side facing up. So if we were asked to calculate these three things, so our expected value is essentially our average, our mean, what you expect to happen. Using your graphics calculator, putting these in your two lists, list one are your X values and list two are the probabilities of each of those things happening. Um, I put in one divided by six or one over six to get this value here. We want to calculate the variables now. Um, remember you have to set up your calculator to have um, list one and do the frequency of list two for that. So what have we got here? 3.5 as our, our average, so that's our EX, so 3.5. Now remembering you can't roll 3.5. When you roll that die, you'll get a three or a four or any of the other numbers. But it's saying that if you were to do that experiment many, many times, looking at all the outcomes that you got, and seeing what the average of that would be, that's where you'd get your 3.5 from. Um, and then our standard deviation here comes from our calculator, this 1.707. Uh, well, it rounds up to eight, so let's write that down. Now your calculator doesn't tell you what the variance is, but the way you get that is squaring the standard deviation number. So it's sigma squared, and that gives us 2.917. For more information and an attempt to explain what standard deviation and variance are, see the previous video, 7D. Okay, now taking this the next step further, putting it in a scenario of a, something in this form. So you're invited to play a game and we're letting Y equal the expected amount of money earned from this game. It costs you $8 to play and we're using this scenario up here. So you have to pay $8, so already you're $8 out of pocket but you win $2 for every dot that is rolled on the die. So for example, if you rolled a one, you'd get $2 back. If you rolled a six, you'd get $12 back. Um, and so first of all, we wanna set up what is Y. That's the expected amount of money earned. So a formula to predict how much you're going to earn in any of these six scenarios. And we're gonna use that to calculate these three things. So first of all, what is Y? It's um, a linear equation. So how much did you have to pay to start with? You had to pay $8. So that's where you're already $8 out of pocket. That would be a negative eight. But then you're going to earn, so hence a plus, how much? $2 for every, so we're looking at a multiply here, um, the variable, what's the variable? The thing that can change? The number that you can roll, that could change. So that we're representing as x. So that's our linear function, but we tend to write it in this form, 2x take 8. So you can see how that relates to today's concept. It doesn't have to be a plus number. I've created one with a negative number. So to work out our expected value of, or, uh, of y, that's how much money, I guess, on average you could expect to earn from this game. So what we're working out there is... So how do we work that out? What could we put into our calculator to work out um, this? We can't necessarily put this in because we've already done that in the step before, but this is where you can use this fact. If you have a function in this form, check, we've got that, you can rearrange um, it to work out the expected value in this form. So let's do that. So we bring the two out the front and then we're going to multiply that by um, the expected value and subtract off eight. Now that's great because now we've got the e to the x on its own and we've already isolated what that number is. That's 3.5 
and you work that out and it comes out to be negative one. What units is that? Dollars. So essentially, um, on average, you're going to earn negative one dollar. So you're going to lose. So my question, is it a fair game? No, not in that scenario. Ask yourself, what could you change? What part of that could change to make it fair? If you were the person running the game, then that's probably good because overall you're actually going to get a dollar off everybody overall. Next part, the variance for this is looking up here. So the variance we can rewrite like this. Now you notice that the plus B has gone and I guess the reason for that is because that doesn't affect the variance. That's almost like your starting point. As you know, that if you were to graph this negative eight, that would be your y-intercept. So that just sort of changes where the mean oscillates around, if you like. It won't affect the variance though. So we're multiplying this, as the formula says, by the variance of x, as we've learnt from above, was this number over here, 2.917. And that gives us 11.668. Now the units for this, it's dollars, but it's actually dollars squared because variance is standard deviation squared. Now that's not very useful if we were to talk about um, how much this scenario varies in dollars squared. So that's part of the reason why we calculate the standard deviation as the square root of that because that has more meaning for us. So the standard deviation here is equal to, checking out the formula up here, the modulus of a and our a is 2 multiplied by the standard deviation, which was 1.708. Um, or, just out of interest, you, you could take um, the variance number and square root that. Because you've already done it, you don't necessarily have to use that formula. And then the answer for that is 342, and the units for that is dollars. So we're saying that is um, the standard deviation, how much things uh, deviate from the mean in this scenario. Okay, if you liked it, thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and feel free to share these with anybody that you think um, could, they could be of use to. Thank you.